23, right? Yeah, 73. Okay. Uh, okay, so we were at the stage wherein we had built our regression equation and uh, we were waiting to uh, for the next steps to uh, start, right? So once you have built your regression equation and you have, uh, you know, tested uh, done the t-test for the significance of the beta values and you have found out that uh, the beta values are significant and even if not significant are not drastically insignificant then what the next step does is you need to check how accurate your uh, regression equation is so for accuracy one can uh, look at r square which is based nothing but uh, as we discussed the last class it's the ratio between the variation in the data explained by your model and the total variation in the data right so we had discussed that and apart from r square one can also look at the residual okay so looking at by residual uh, one uh, what one means is it's the difference between the actual and the predicted suppose you are trying to predict y then what the difference between the actual value of y and the value of y you get out of your regression equation is called residual so residual is usually denoted by e and i denotes the ith data point so for the ith data point the residual is nothing but yi minus yi cap so yi cap is your uh, output from regression equation this is a uh, sort of way that uh, uh, one is, uh, this residual is depicted in uh, stats uh, statistics related books so uh, looking at residuals serves us two purpose one is uh, we get a hold of uh, uh, or we get an idea regarding how accurate our uh, regression equation is and the second thing that um, uh, one can learn or deduce by looking at uh, residuals are the different assumptions uh, that one has made uh, while building the regression model. Okay. Uh, so, if you remember, we had made a number of assumptions during uh, before we started building the regression model. One of it was the linearity uh, assumption wherein we assume that uh, we are, since we are trying to build a linear regression, we uh, assume that there is a linear relationship between your predictor and the uh, predict, uh, predicting or the independent variables. So that has to oh. be tested. Then we assumed a constant variance uh, of uh, y for all levels of x, which is uh, called homoscedasticity assumption uh, homo means uh, you know constant and scedasticity means variance so it, it's called homo scedasticity assumption or in other words we want to test whether the data has heteroscedasticity in it so the opposite of homo scedasticity is heteroscedasticity so that has to be tested the third thing we need to test is uh, since we did all the t-test and everything based on the assumption that the underlying data is normal because other than that all the tests would be null and void that's why we have to test for normal distribution assumption as well and uh, apart from that we also need to test for the independence of observation so what happens is if the observations you have uh, captured are dependent on one another say for example especially in a case uh, wherein you are capturing value of a particular attribute or a particular variable over time we have usually seen that the values are correlated to one another okay? say for example you capture the same data point say for example way of a person over time then it is usually seen that the weight uh, data points that you capture capture will be correlated to one another over time. So we want so that is where this kind of uh, correlation is detrimental for uh, any kind of regression. So that's why we need to check whether there exists any such correlation or not. Okay.
so this is again uh, the predicted value or this we have discussed we just discussed what uh, residual is which is observed minus predicted and this is an example of calculation of residuals and now let's come to uh, so residuals apart from uh, being used for uh, you know testing the different uh, assumptions we had made during regression are also used in a way to test whether any data points are present in our regression is an outlier or is an influential data. So outlier or, or unusual data point and influential data point is a concept which is used in regression. So outlier is any such data point which has a large residual or in other words outlier is a data point which has an abnormal value of y given the value of x say for example if we were uh, building a regression model on age and weight then if you have somebody who is very overweight then he will be he or she will be an outlier right because on an average we saw that uh, say at given and the age of 25 a person has an uh, you usually have an weight of uh, say 60 or 65 kg but if there is somebody who has a weight of 90 or who has a weight of 40 then that person will be an outlier okay and these kinds of outliers are detrimental so from the regression yeah. so you did yeah. mind mention the outliers which is an outlier indicate a sample size which you are or may indicate a data entry error or other problems so, I mean, I don't understand that exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, an out, how can an outlier happen, right? So, out, like for example, if we go back to the uh, case wherein we were regressing between age and weight, right? So we were trying to predict weight based on a person's age. So, okay. when can an outlier occur? So, uh, say for example, in for one particular observation, we have somebody who has who is of age 25 has a weight of 90 kgs, and in and in another case, somebody who is of age 40 has a weight of 40 kgs. Okay, so both of these are outliers, right? So how can outliers happen in the data? They can happen in two ways. One at the point when these data points were uh, being recorded for example in this particular case when somebody was writing down or recording the weights of people he or she might have done a mistake and have, might have uh, you know misplaced or misread the data that was that is one way one way this can happen second what can happen is somebody is overweight or somebody is underweight so in, in data, in population also, you will find people or you will find cases who are exception, right? So no model can be built on exceptional data. So for example, uh, in, your, in, in any class, you will find people who uh, do not study, but yet they are brilliant and they score full marks or in everything, right? But you cannot uh, build your assumption on anything based on those people because they are exceptions, right? So that is what is being told here that an outlier may indicate a sample peculiarity which is exception or may indicate a data entry error okay. yeah okay now uh, outliers are usually detrimental to regression lines why because when you were trying to uh, build a regression line you remember that we were trying to reduce the total error right so we were trying to use the method called least square method which was trying to reduce the total sum of square of errors right so if there is an outlier so for that particular point the sum of the square of error will be very high so what will happen in the process is the regression line will mold itself to adjust for that outlier so wherever that outlier is present, it will pull the regression line towards itself. So, that, so that's why what will happen at that point is 
the regression line will start predicting wrongly even for non-outlier observation. So just to uh, go back to the example of weight and age, if there is the person who is of age 9, uh, 25 and weight 90, what will happen is he will be pulling the regression line at the age of 25 towards him. So what will happen if the actual average weight at the age of 25 is 60, but due to the outlier being present, it, the regression line will try will be predicting something like say 62, 63. Okay, because it will be pulling it towards itself. And similar for an okay. underweight person. So okay, and if we want but, to yeah. differentiate between outlier and average, then what would be the exact thing which we can call it as a differentiation? Because both are acting as an exception for the data set. Outlier and influential points, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, coming back to outliers, there are two kinds of outliers. One is an influential outlier and another is a non-influential outlier. So, let me try and show to you if I can uh, in some way. Just a second. Yeah. I'll try to draw a graph here. You can see the line I'm drawing, right? Yeah. Suppose this is your, my drawing is not exactly straight, but suppose this is your okay. regression line, okay? Okay. If this is your regression line, if I have a point here, suppose this is a point, and this is a point, and there is another point which is out here, Okay. Okay. So actually all these three are outliers, right? Because here you see that these are outliers from the perspective of, uh, you know, the response variable. If say we are plotting X here and we had Y here. So these these were outliers in Y, right? Because they, the X was within range, whereas their Y was not abnormal, right? Whereas this particular value is both outlier with respect to X and Y. Because there are only, see if most of the bulk points are concentrated say here. So here are the most of the data points that are concentrated. And then there is one point which is here. So you can, you can see the uh, points. Can you yeah. explain after what you explained, you draw the, you drew the three points which are outliers. After I drew that, the three points, three. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drew the drew the three points. So now what I am doing is I am trying to show to you where other points are based. So say okay. for example, most of the points are based. So one second. So here is here are the points that are based. I can see that. You can see, right? So most of the points are based out of here in this particular area. Okay? Yeah. And there is one point which is here. So although all okay. these three points are outliers, this particular point, since it is both outlier in X and Y, this will not pull the regression line to, to a, you know, abnormally. So it's just extending the regression line, not deviating it. Right? Whereas okay. when you come to these particular points, these are pulling the regression line away from the usual. Okay. So these two will be influential points and this will be non-influential but outlier. So you understood why these are influential, right? So because they are pulling the regression line away since they are outlier in Y. But since it it is both outlier in X and Y, it's not pulling it in sideways, it's just extending the regression line. So it does not affect other data points. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, if you have any doubt, you can let me know, I can explain again. I got it. You got it, right? Okay. 